Please rise. Almighty God, we, the representatives of the citizens of the City of Brisbane, are assembled here to strive and care for the welfare of our city and all its people. Lord, we ask that you guide us in the decisions we make today. Amen. Amen. We acknowledge this country and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders as traditional custodians, their language, songs and dance. We pay respect to Elders past, present and emerging. May we continue to peacefully walk together in respect and in caring for this country and one another. Please be seated. I declare the meeting open. Apologies. Councillor Landers. Mr Chair, I advise that Councillor Marks, Councillor Hammond and Councillor McLaughlin will be absent today. I move that they be granted a leave of absence from the meeting. Seconded. Moved by Councillor Landers, seconded by Councillor Hutton, that Councillors Marks, Hammond and McLaughlin be granted a leave of absence from today's meeting. All those in favour say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Councillor Cassidy. I move that Councillor Cook be granted a leave of absence for tonight's meeting. Second. Moved by Councillor Cassidy, seconded by Councillor Strunk, that Councillor Cook be granted a leave of absence from today's meeting. All those in favour say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Councillors, I draw your attention to the notice of motion at item two on the agenda. Lord Mayor, would you please move the motion? Thank you, Mr Chair. I move that Council resolves to adopt the investment policy at attachment A, adopt the debt policy at attachment B, revoke the partial rebate of rates and charges pensioner policy adopted on the 24th of June 2021 by Council Resolution 862 2020-21 and adopt the pensioner's partial rebate of rates and charges policy at attachment C for the 2022-23 financial year. That we also revoke the partial rebate of rates and charges first home owners policy adopted on the 24th of June 2021 by Council Resolution 862 slash 2020 2021 and adopt the partial rebates of rates and charges first home owners policy at attachment D for the 2023 uh, 2022 2023 financial year and that we revoke the partial rebate of general rates not for profit organisations policy adopted on the 24th of June 2021 by Council Resolution 862 2020 and 2021 and adopt the not-for-profit organisation's partial rebate of general rates policy at attachment E for the 2022-2023 financial year and revoke the payment of uh, for overdue rates or charges policy adopted on the 24th of June 2021 by Council Resolution 862 2020 2021 and adopt the, the payment of overdue rates and charges policy at attachment F for the 2022-2023 financial year and revoke the partial rebate of rates and charges job seeker policy adopted on the 24th of June 2021 by Council Resolution 862-2020-2021 and revoke the partial rebate of rates and charges not-for-profit kindergartens policy adopted on 24th June 2021 by Council Resolution 862-2020-2021 and adopt the not-for-profit kindergartens partial re rebate of rates and charges policy at attachment G for the 2022-2023 financial year <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and revoke the infrastructure charges debt management policy adopted on 24th of June 2021 by Council Resolution 862-2020-2021 <coughs> <Excuse me. coughs> I just Where was I? No. Uh, in infrastructure <laughs> charges. Uh, at, at, and adopt uh, the infrastructure charges debt yes, management yeah. policy at attachment H for the 2022-23 financial year and delegate to the Chief Executive Officer all of Council's powers under Section 11 of the City of Brisbane Act 2010, specified in Column 1 of Table 1 on the general conditions of delegations as set out in Table 1 and adopt the Brisbane Infrastructure Charges Resolution Number 11, 2022, at attachment I, with effect from the 1st of July, 2022, and, am <clears throat> and amend the FMA 701 SEQ Flooding Partial Rebate of Rates and Charges Policy, adopted on the 8th of March, 2022, by Council Resolution 504-21-22 uh, financial year, as set out in the attachment J, with retrospective effect on the 15th of June, 2022, 
and approve the report of the Establishment and Coordination Committee meeting dated 13th of June 2022 at attachment K and adopt uh, the uninhabitable residence partial rebate of rates and charges policy at attachment L for the 2022-2023 financial year and approve the significant contracting plan for the Brisbane International Cycle Park at Murray at attachment M and delegate certain powers of council specified in column one of the table of delegation of powers to the delegates listed in column two subject to any limits or special conditions listed in column three and on the general conditions of delegation as set out at the end of the table of delegations of power as set out in attachment N. Seconded what he said. <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved by the Lord Mayor and seconded by Councillor Cunningham. The Council resolves to adopt the investment policy at attachment A, adopt the debt policy at attachment B, revoke the partial rebate of rates and charges pensioners policy adopted on 24 June 2021 by Council Resolution 862-2020-2021, adopt the pensioners' partial rebate of rates and charges policy at attachment C for the 2022-23 financial year, revoke the partial rebate of rates and charges first homeowners policy adopted on 24 June 2021 by Council Resolution 862-2020-2021, adopt the partial rebate of rates and charges first homeowners policy at attachment D for the 2022-23 financial year, revoke the partial rebate of general rates not-for-profit organisations policy adopted on 24 June 2021 by Council Resolution 862-2020-2021. Adopt the not-for-profit organisation's partial rebate for general rates policy at attachment E for the 2022-23 financial year. Revoke the payment for overdue rates or charges policy adopted on 24 June 2021 by Council Resolution 862-2020-21. Adopt the payment for overdue rates or charges policy at attachment F for the 2022-23 financial year. Revoke the partial rebate of rates and charges job seeker policy adopted on 24 June 2021 by Council Resolution 862-2020-21. Revoke the partial rebate of rates and charges not-for-profit kindergartens policy adopted on 24 June 2021 by Council Resolution 862-2020-21. Adopt the not-for-profit kindergartens partial rebate of rates and charges policy at attachment G for the 2022-23 financial year. Revoke the infrastructure charges debt management policy adopted on 24 June 2021 by Council Resolution 862-2020-21. Adopt the infrastructure charges debt management policy at att attachment H for the 2022-23 financial year. Delegate to the Chief Executive Officer all of Council's powers under Section 11 of the City of Brisbane Act 2010, specified in Column 1 of Table 1 on the general conditions of delegations as set out in Table 1. Adopt the Brisbane Infrastructure Charges Resolution No. 11, 2022, at Attachment I, with effect on and from 1 July 2022. Amend the FMA 701 SEQ flooding partial rebate of rates and charges policy adopted on 8 March 2022 by Council Resolution 504-2021-22 as set out in attachment J with retrospective effect to 15 June 2022. Approve the report of the Establishment and Coordination Committee dated 13 June 2022 at attachment K. Adopt the uninhabitable residence partial rebate of rates and charges policy at, attach at attachment L for the 2022-23 financial year. Approve the significant contracting plan for the Brisbane International Cycle Park Murray at attachment M and delegate certain powers of council specified in column one of the table of delegations of power to the delegates listed in column two, subject to any limits or special condi conditions listed in column three and on the general conditions of delegations as set out at the end of the table of delegations of power as set out 
in attachment N. Is there any debate? Point of order. Point of order, Councillor Johnston. Uh, yes, uh, I move that items uh, 19, 20, 21, and 22 are taken seriatim for debate and voting purposes. So, Councillor, oh, could I just repeat that yep. point? Uh, points 19, 20, 21, and 22 seriatim for debate and voting. And I'd ask that uh, number 20. Uh, is taken seriatim for voting purposes, and I'm happy that the other three, 19, 21 and 22, are taken together for voting purposes. So 20 seriatim for voting and 19, 20 and 21 for uh, seriatim for voting. Uh, just point of order, uh, just procedurally at this point I'll to make it easier to do it all at once. Thank you, um, Councillor So if tw uh, 20 is taken uh, separately, could I ask that uh, 19 and 22 um, taken separately also four. together? Together. Separate so 19 and, uh, 19 and 22 voted on, that, then that will mean 20 and 21 separately. For voting. For voting and also 2, 11 and 16 for voting. 2, 11 and 16 for voting. As a block, is fine. Okay. All right. Uh, is there any debate? Uh, Lord Mayor, um, if you could speak to uh, everything else starting uh, with 1. So 1 to 18. Okay. Um, well, I, I assume that because these are all taken uh, together, that um, the, it should be a pretty straightforward process, Mr. Chair. Um, given that uh, these policies are the policies that uh, come through each year um, and relate to things that uh, are essentially ongoing um, programs to support um, providing for support to pensioners, for example, for uh, partial uh, rates and charges rebates. Uh, so providing support to first homers, homeowners, um, pr providing support to not-for-profit organisations, including some kindergartens as well. Um, the uh, um, uh, other policies, such as the investment policy and the debt policy, um, I look like, I'm not sure what benefit there is in having too much of a discussion about them because they are ongoing policies. Um, they were in place last year. Uh, we've updated them for the new financial year, but um, as you can see, there's no drastic or dramatic changes in those policies. Um, and so, I, look, I'm, I guess I'll leave my um, comments at that. Um, further debate? Yeah. Councillor Cassidy. No, thanks, Chair. There, there mightn't be much change in the policies. There is some, uh, but there is a, a very a big change in circumstances. Uh, in which these policies uh, will be um, uh, dictating how this council budget operates for the year ahead. So we do, we Labor councillors do have some concerns, and I'll go through them as briefly as possible now. On on point one, the investment policy. Uh, this is updating last year's investment policy with the um, new dates, 22, 23 financial year. Uh, so that will um, stay the same and that's something we will support. We won't be supporting the debt policy uh, this year because this uh, LNP council now is the single biggest borrowing council uh, in recent memory and certainly the, the highest borrowing council since um, uh, the Liberal administration of Sally Ann Atkinson loaded Brisbane ratepayers with debt in the 1980s. Now it took a decade took a decade after that administration to break the back of that, L uh, that Liberal Party debt at the time. Now, since this Lord Mayor has become Lord Mayor in 2019, he's loaded up ratepayers with a billion dollars of debt, and in this budget, another $600 million worth of debt. So under this LNP Mayor, we're seeing an increase in debt by $1.6 billion and nothing to show for it in our suburbs. So once again, it's Brisbane ratepayers who will foot the bill for this LNP debt and instead of fixing suburban footpaths and suburban drainage yep. uh, and potholes, their rates will be servicing, their, their rates increase will be servicing this LNP Mayor's debt repayments. We have no detail about what this $1.6 billion uh, is being borrowed for under this LNP Mayor. 
So councillors now, today, are essentially being asked to sign a blank cheque without any information yep. on why this debt is necessary. This is the most secretive budget uh, we have seen in this place for a generation. Uh, and we know that this LNP administration has poor form when it comes to managing money and debt. Uh, for example, in the 2021-2 uh, budget, the Lord Mayor said he needed to borrow $200 million to buy some property for the 2032 right. Olympic and Paralympic, uh, Paralympic Games. That was his big borrowing, but uh, instead that, of course, wasn't needed last financial year. Uh, so what did the Mayor do with that? He's propped up his failing Brisbane Metro, which is now costing $1.7 billion. In billion, 1.7 billion instead of 944 million, as he promised, as he promised. Uh, so, uh, you know, we can't trust this LNP administration with financial management when they have such a shocking track record. Uh, clause three is to revoke the um, partial rates and charges pensioner policy, um, and uh, these comments uh, can apply uh, from clauses three to 10, 12 to 15, uh, and 17. Uh, revoking those existing policies on investment remissions of pensioners, not-for-profit organisations, not-for-profit kindies, and deal with late payment of rates, infrastructure charges, which are set at budget time for the financial year, which were items we will be supporting. <coughs> Labor councils support the relief, rates relief for these groups, the pensioners, not-for-profits, and so on. And in this year's budget, uh, these groups are needing more relief from this LNP Mayor's massive rates hikes uh, more than ever. So we'll be supporting all of those items. Uh, item 11, however, is uh, revoking the partial uh, rebate for rates and charges for people on JobSeeker. So that was adopted by Council on 24th of June 21. Uh, and unlike changes and updates to other rates rebate policies, Clause 11 is the end of this partial rebate for Brisbane on uh, uh, or for job seeker payment recipients. Now, at a time this LNP mayor is digging deeper and deeper into the pockets of Brisbane residents, he's taking away relief for people who are doing it particularly tough in our community. So this is a real kick in the guts for residents who are still um, on job seeker payments and are being expected uh, to not only pay their rates in full, but also cop those massive increases this financial year. So we won't be supporting that item. Uh, on number 16, which is the delegation of the Chief Executive Officer of all of Council's powers under Section 11 of the City of Brisbane Act, um, this is the delegations for the CEO in relation to the budget. There is some further debate later about other delegations. Now, while Labor councillors have supported the delegation in the past, we won't be supporting this today in its current form. Uh, this budget, as we have outlined, uh, is the most secretive and least transparent council budget in a generation. The way this budget was structured deliberately removed all oversight of the budget from elected representatives. Now, the LNP finance chair, um, seems to think that taking councillors out of the decision-making process to make changes to the budget is a good thing. Well, Labor councillors disagree with that. Previously, the CEO would have to bring a budget review document to ENC for approval where, where there were changes to the budget each quarter, uh, which was an extensive report, which in turn came to this chamber for debate and voting for the democratic oversight. Um, now, changes to the budget during the financial year previously under the previous delegations would be tracked and reported and voted on in a public way and we would all be held publicly accountable for those decisions we make as elected representatives. Now, these changes are being made entirely, entirely behind closed doors. There's no oversight by elected councillors. The budget changes throughout the year will remain entirely secret. secret. Um, and that's why we won't be supporting uh, these delegations um, today, and I think the final one is uh, 18, which is the um, $250 rebate uh, for ratepayers impacted by the, um, uh, the 2022 February rainfall and flooding event, and that is something uh, that we will be supporting today. I think that's it for this section. Any further debate? Councillor Johnston. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Chairman. Just briefly on the... Um matters on the special meeting before us today. Uh, the matters before us in this section of the special meeting are fairly straightforward. Um, they're ones that we would normally debate at the end of uh, the budget. Um, uh, but I do want to put on the record uh, my concern about uh, the following uh, issues. Firstly, uh, the council debt policy at item B. Um, <laughs> 
uh, this administration stand up as they did here today and uh, tell the people of Brisbane that there is no debt. Uh, that this council runs a, a budget surplus, which at an operational level um, it does and is required to do. Um, but what it doesn't tell people about uh, is the three billion dollars in debt that's sitting on the credit card um, that they've just forgotten about. It's like that's not our responsibility. I mean, that's somebody else's responsibility. And under this Lord Mayor, uh, who's been the finance chair, the deputy mayor, uh, and now the Lord Mayor, that debt has gone from zero to three billion dollars, and there is zero plan to pay it off. What's, what's worse is interest rates are going up. So this is going to cost us more and more to pay for the increased debt out of our operating revenues, which reduces the level of investment we can make in ordinary projects and suburban projects uh, around the suburbs, and particularly in my ward that misses out all the time. Uh, the debt policy before us today um, basically is asking over the next two years, uh, so for this uh, forthcoming year, to borrow an additional $326 million. $326 million. Now, that's more than what we're spending on the Metro this year. Um, the Lord Mayor's given zero, absolutely zero explanation about what this is actually for. Um, What's it, what's it funding? The Lord Mayor says, oh, we don't borrow for operational reasons. Well, uh, $326 million of debt that this council wants to take on this year, and there is absolutely zero explanation from the Lord Mayor about what it's for. Um, it, it, it probably is uh, part of it. I think 70, part of it will be for the botched metro, for sure. Uh, but then what else is it being spent on? I mean, is it paying for Moggle Road? Is it paying for basic road upgrades? Is that what it's being paid for? Is it, is it, is it funding uh, Councillor Adams' trips to Greece? We don't know, because we've got a brand new secretive budget that doesn't actually allocate funding, and we don't know what it's for. Uh, so this Lord Mayor is asking uh, this council and the ratepayers of Brisbane to write him a blank cheque for $326 million with zero explanation to the ratepayers of Brisbane about what it's for. Now, that's this year. That's this year. Next year, it's even worse. It's, and this is on top of the existing uh, $3 billion in debt that we have now. Next year, the Lord Mayor is asking for an extra $600 million uh, in debt-funded uh, revenue for this council. What's that going to go on? Down the black hole of the metro? What other projects? We don't know, again, because this Lord Mayor is not accountable to the residents of Brisbane about how this council spends money. And we have seen it over the last two days um, that the structure of this budget has been changed to hide that financial accountability from the people of Brisbane. The Lord Mayor says, I'm going to take on a billion dollars of debt over two years without any explanation. And the Lord Mayor stands up in here tonight and goes, didn't even use his whole 10 minutes, stands up and goes, oh, there's nothing to see here. This is all very straightforward. Um, but he just wants a lazy billion dollars in a blank cheque to stick in the council finances um, where it is unaccounted for in our budget. That is not prudent financial management. That is not, uh, that is not responsible financial management. And that absolutely is not strong financial management. So the Lord Mayor should stand up here today and say, this is where every cent of that $326 million is going. Because I know that this administration is not spending it wisely. When its signature project doubles in cost from $944 million to $1.7 billion, and this administration <coughs> borrows more than that, more than it needs to fund that project in the financials that we've seen it, or the supporting information, as it's called now, uh, then there is a real problem with how the finances of this city are run. This administration wants a blank cheque 
to stick in its slush fund so that it can run this city um, behind closed doors without any transparency and accountability, and I do not support that. It is a huge problem. And what's worse, they're still borrowing beyond that, um, but probably a bit like ScoMo, they think they won't be around. They'll have run the credit card up to $4 billion. $4 billion uh, in an election year, with no plan to pay it down, with increasing interest rates, uh, with the cost of financing those, that interest skyrocketing over the next few years. And this administration's just getting the credit card out, and when they botch their major projects, they just go and, to, uh, they go and ask for more money from the state government, who hand it over, and the residents of Brisbane are the ones who are missing out here. They are the ones who are missing out because the, uh, the funds aren't being spent in the suburbs. They're not being spent in my ward. My residents are paying for this debt binge by the Lord Mayor and the extra $1 billion that he wants to spend over two years. He wants to borrow and spend over two years. And meanwhile, he doesn't think he has to account for it. That is not good enough. I don't support it and I won't be voting uh, for item two. Um, there are some other issues with uh, what is proposed here. Again, the Lord Mayor just glossed over all of this. Um, I don't know why we're um, removing the rebate for job, seeker, um, uh, job seekers. I, I think there's something wrong with that. Uh, certainly, I think that there are people doing it very tough out there, as I've said over the last uh, few hours, and I'm not sure why this policy is being revoked. Certainly, there's been no discussion about it with councillors. There's been no explanation from the Lord Mayor about what's going on. Uh, and it, it's unreasonable that the vulnerable people in our community uh, are being shortchanged. So I don't support, I don't support that. I certainly um, uh, have some concerns about the debt management policy that Council has. Um, but most importantly, uh, there is a really big problem with the way in which this administration uh, is funding uh, is funding its budgets, and it is incredibly problematic because this Lord Mayor has no intention of, uh, of um, being transparent with the residents of Brisbane <coughs> about how much debt he's actually run this council personally, as finance chair, Lord Mayor, deputy mayor, how much money he's run this council into in debt. Three billion dollars today, and under his leadership by the next election, it will be four billion dollars with zero accountability, zero explanation about what it's for and zero plan to pay the debt down. Now all of us know, and again before they jump up and you know I get an Angela Owen, Councillor Owen uh, 101 accounting lecture, I'm not saying that all debt is bad, but what I'm saying is that we are the custodians of ratepayers funds in this city. And it's our job to make sure that it is being done in a transparent and an accountable way. And this is where the Lord Mayor has fallen down yet again. He just wants a billion dollars on the bank card and doesn't want to tell you what it's for. Um, well, I don't think it's good enough uh, and I don't think it should be supported. So I just urge all councillors uh, to vote against this debt policy um, because it's just going to cause misery for our... Um, it's going to cause misery for our community uh, when we can't fund... What, what, next year, there might not even be 18 footpaths because there's not enough money to fund those. Um, you know? uh, but meanwhile, the Lord Mayor's getting a billion dollars in extra debt and we don't know what it's for. It's not good enough. Further debate? No further debate. Lord Mayor, would you like to reply on items one uh, to eighteen? Yes, thank you. Well, that was that were two genuinely embarrassing contributions uh, on these very simple matters. Um, embarrassing in so many different ways. Uh, where do I start? Uh, but let's go to the first issue of, of debt. And um, Councillor Johnston, um, look, I will spare you the Councillor Angela Owen lecture on basic finance and accounting, um, because I can give you that basic lecture. Uh, there is a difference between a deficit budget and debt. They are two different things. Um, a deficit budget is very different 
to debt. A deficit budget means that you are spending more than you bring in. Simple. It's a sp simple thing there. Um, but as I pointed out very clearly just before, we only ever borrow to build things. And, and if, if Councillor Johnston can't work out what we're building, she hasn't read the budget, because it's very clear what we're building. Um, we Councillor are... Johnston, Councillor Johnston, please. Well, let's see how long this fairy tale lasts that all of these things aren't in the budget. When, when things continue to get billed and, uh, built and bills get paid, um, Councillor Johnston uh, will have some egg on her face because it is all funded and it is in the budget. Uh, but here's some simple facts. Councillor Johnston was saying $4 billion repeatedly, $4 billion. Um, okay, well, let's, let's break this down to really simple terms. If, if you're in a household that earns $100,000 a year, you have a $100,000 budget, and you've got to pay for your expenses and work out what you do with those and what you invest the money in and what you allocate the money to, would it be completely unreasonable of you to take out a mortgage on your house of $100,000? No, not at all. In fact, people on an income like that usually take out a mortgage of many, many times their annual <coughs> budget. Many times. So $100,000, borrowing $100,000, is that outrageous? No, that's actually quite conservative. So we've got a $4 billion budget, and down the track, our budget, our borrowings for infrastructure will be $4 billion. That is a very sustainable and conservative level of borrowing, given the amount of infrastructure that we have built. So we hear this um, claim that the debt was zero. Well, I'll, I'll tell you why the debt was zero, because we used to have these things called dams, which we owned. And the state government forcibly removed the dams from councils, and in return, they reduced they reduced the borrowings to zero. But what they did was they took away an income-producing asset from councils, right. one that returned millions or tens of millions of dollars a year, and then uh, they repaid the debt at that point. And so what's happened since the debt was zero? We've built over $10 billion worth of infrastructure. Over $10 billion we have built. And we have only <laughs> borrowed a fraction of that infrastructure that we have built. Very, very responsible level of borrowing. And uh, we have delivered over $10 billion worth of infrastructure since the time uh, when the debt was zero. So we have, we have responsibly managed our borrowings. We only ever borrow to build infrastructure and for against assets. We don't borrow for operating expenses like other levels of government do. That's, that's called putting it on the credit card. We don't do that. We only borrow against assets. We only borrow for assets. Uh, so um, this, is, this is pretty simple stuff here, but obviously it's not so simple for some people in the chamber. Um, so, uh, and then one final thing. They were talking about the removal of the COVID rates rebate for job seekers. I, look, as much as, as much as some people might uh, want the pandemic to keep going and going, um, I think we're at the end of that process now. And what, what happened in the beginning of COVID when we introduced this policy was that we saw an expectation of mass unemployment. Remember that? The beginning of the pandemic, everyone was predicting mass unemployment. What is the employment rate, the unemployment rate today? 3.9%. If there is a better time to find a job, I'd like you to point it out. I would like you to point it out because the unemployment rate is at historic low levels, and in fact, employers right across the community are saying, we can't find people to fill all the jobs. I was talking to a engineering firm just uh, the other day who said, 
that they had 600 jobs to fill in Queensland and they couldn't find people to fill those jobs. 600. Yep. And so we saw the very clear positive change from an expectation of mass unemployment where lots more people would be on JobSeeker to now fewer people being on JobSeeker than we've seen in decades. And so uh, that's why the policy is ending. Unemployment is at record and historic low levels. Um, people that want to go out and get a job are getting jobs. There's lots of jobs that need to be filled. Uh, and so we have a very different situation than was anticipated at the beginning of the pandemic when this policy was first introduced. So. Thank you, Lord Mayor. We will now move uh, to the vote on items 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17 and 18. All those in favour say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. I will now move to the vote on items 2, 11 and 16. All those in favour say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. No. The ayes have it. Division. Uh, division called by Councillor Cassidy and Councillor Johnston. Councillors, eyes to my right, nose to my left. Please ring the bells. Thank you. Orderly, please lock the bars. Clark, please read the results. Mr Chair, the ayes have it, the voting being uh, 17 in favour and six against. The motion is carried. We will now move to items 19, 20, 21 and 22. Lord Mayor. Thank you, <coughs> Thank you Mr Chair. Uh, we have uh, included uh, in this tranche, um, we have some uh, changes to the administrative arrangements within uh, Brisbane City Council and the structure of the organisation. Um, and uh, this particularly relates to the host city office uh, for helping to coordinate the, um, our efforts and input into the delivery of the 2032 Olympic and Paralympic Games led by uh, Di Curry. It also relates to uh, relocates the International Relations and Multicultural Affairs Unit uh, from in the Lord Mayor's Administration and Engagement Branch uh, and it will become its own branch which will sit under CPAS uh, which is led by Nicole Andronicus. Uh, we have um, uh, the further attachment, which is um, for uninhabitable homes, which we sort of had a debate on already. In fact, well, not sort of, we did have a debate on already. Um, so I won't touch on that one again because it's already been covered. Uh, we also have the uh, Murray Recreation Reserve um, and the plan to create a, an international standard cycling track which is jointly funded by all three levels of government. Um, a fantastic example of cooperation between all three levels of government. Um, I was asked uh, recently about uh, uh, why this facility was different to say the, the Anamir's velodrome. Well, this is not a velodrome. This is a, a road cycling track and also a speed skating track. Uh, it can be used for many different things um, and also available to the community as well. I know. Um, there's a lot of informal use already that's down there, and this will only increase um, with this improvement and upgrade. Uh, and we obviously want to see the next generation of, uh, of athletes, whether they're cyclists or speed skaters or um, you know, other events, 
uh, you know, inspired to get involved in the 2032 games, and this is one of the ways that we're doing it uh, in partnership with the three levels of government. Uh, so have I missed an item, Mr Chair? Is that, is that no, the items we're really talking good. about? Okay. Um, so I'll, look, I'll leave my comments at that. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Further debate? Councillor Cassidy. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, the Lord Mayor did miss an item. The oh. delegations talking about them anyway, but they're, they're here for debate. I'm sure he will in his sum up. Um, can I just confirm uh, that um, 19 and 22 are being voted on together and, the, That's and right. 20 and 21 separately? Yes, 19 and 22 yep. for voting and then 20 and 21. Yeah, thanks. Um, so uh, firstly on uh, 19, clause 19, this is the amendment to administrative arrangements to change councils organisational structure as well as function and responsibilities of those divisions, groups and branches. This feels like something that's happening every few months uh, in this council these days. We're having an item being brought to council to change the organisational structure, to change where people work, change how people work, who they report to, whether they can talk to councillors or not. Um, uh, and the question I suppose that we ask and that residents will ask is how do these sort of items help deliver better value for money uh, for residents out in the suburbs? How do um, these kind of fiddling around with organisational arrangements in the context of a secret budget help deliver, to, uh, deliver more footpaths to make their streets accessible or improve their parks, have council proactively seek out and repair damaged footpaths and potholes? The answer is nothing. They just continue to fiddle with the, the way in which uh, the budget is delivered and the way in which council runs as an organisation. They seem to be very, very inwardly focused, this administration, uh, these days. And what this organisational structure does not address is the ongoing outsourcing of council jobs to insecure casual labour hire companies. Uh, <coughs> So we know the budget, uh, as at the budget information sessions, council has a head count, as they say, of 9,718 people working for council, um, just 7,008 are permanent. So what we now have is a situation here in council, largely, I think, as a result of this LNP administration fiddling around with divisions and branches and the organisation, we have 1,137 staff who are temporary within council now. They're on temporary short-term contracts. Yes. Uh, there are also, though, uh, 809 casual workers, and on top of those temporary contracts of people working in ongoing roles here in council, there's also 764 contractors who are employed by labour hire companies working alongside council employees, some of which are now uh, kept on tenterhooks in temporary roles, moved around, shifted around, insecure, insecure employments. Exactly right. And that's what these, that's what these organisational changes are all about for the LNP. They think it's a big game. That, 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 that the people who that, yeah, they're treating people's lives as a as a big game. They can just move pieces around like on a chessboard. Well, that's a terrible way to run an organisation that should be people focused because as a council we should be outwardly focused in the community um, representing us, the people uh, that elect us, and those people we employ and they shouldn't be eleven hundred and thirty seven on temporary short term contracts they should be working for the people of Brisbane. That's what they want to be doing, rather than having to look over their shoulder all the time, all the time to make sure they still have a job next week or next month or next year. And we're seeing so much of that at the moment, uh, so much uncertainty uh, from our council workforce about the very future of the kind of work that they'll be doing for the people of Brisbane. Uh, so it is really no wonder that council uh, this administration was left scrambling when natural disasters like the SEQ 2022 floods um, and weather event hit us. Um, there weren't even enough council officers on the ground to fill sandbags, to close roads, um, to deploy what little equipment we still had. Um, and, and that is the direct result of this LMP administration fiddling around uh, and trying to control this organisation. Um, uh, through changes like this. So this, isn't, this is not something we will be supporting uh, today. Item 20 is the partial rates uh, uh, rebate and charges policy, which there was some discussion of earlier, and Labor councils agree that councils should not be kicking residents when they're down. Uh, when that weather event uh, was just a few months ago, four months ago now, there's still residents struggling with those impacts. Many of those homes are still um, uninhabitable, vacant, boarded up with danger, do not enter signs. You walk up and down the streets. I know um, in Council Griffiths area, uh, <coughs> it, Rock, streets of Rockley are being described as ghost towns now. People will be vacant from those places for many months and potentially years to come. The story is the same in places like Brighton and Deegan, 
uh, and Boondal in my ward as well, uh, which is absolutely heartbreaking for our community. So we support efforts to cut the rate spills for residents whose homes are impacted. It's the very, very least uh, council could do for them. Uh, on item uh, 21, the significant contracting plan for the cycle park at Mararee. Uh, this is a significant contracting plan, um, has received funding support from other levels of government, 2.5 million from South East Queensland Community Stimulus Program and over $6 million from the federal government's local roads community infrastructure program. Uh, this investment by council um, does come after years and years of neglect um, of this yes. site. Um, and by this administration, that's right. They neglect, neglected it for almost 20 years, and then they announced one thing with with um, nearly nine million dollars, nine million nine million dollars in funding. And then they say they go like that. They go, yeah, look, look, well done to us, well done to us. We're, we're we're building one thing. We're building one thing in the suburbs, and that's so that makes everything else okay. That makes that 1.6 billion dollars in debt that they've racked up in two years. OK. Well, uh, with the support of those other levels of government, I doubt this administration would have been able to afford this, um, given the dire state um, of this budget. Uh, yeah, that's right. It's just on uh, the LNP's credit card, though. Um, so we have been very, very clear about um, uh, the, the, the way in which we would support the Olympics here in 2032, the Olympics and Paralympic Games as Labor councillors. And that should be that there is a legacy of boosted investment in our local communities, in our sporting groups, in our community organisations and, and tackling Brisbane's housing affordability crisis. Uh, under this LNP council, we're seeing a failure in, to invest in either in a large scale. One single project uh, does not leave a good legacy. Uh, we need to see some serious investment, uh, otherwise people will be left with a very bad taste in their mouth from this LNP administration. Uh, and the final item, which the Lord Mayor didn't talk about, I uh, suspect they know why, uh, is the delegation of powers um, uh, that are non-budget related. Um, so clause 22 seeks the approval for 420 delegations of decisions, about 25% um, of which are new, increased by 25% yes. uh, this financial year. So that means that the CEO, ENC, or a combination of the two will have the power on things like compulsory land resumptions, writing off a reportable loss of a council asset and ex gratia payments as well. Those things will no longer have to have oversight here in this council. Now, while some delegations do make sense, like the issuing of show cause notices, conducting food safety audits, uh, more and more, though, we are seeing decisions uh, being made behind closed doors and not being brought to this chamber for public scrutiny. And that is outside of um, having a ward office and meeting with constituents and representing them throughout the organisation of council. That is our job. That's what we are here to do. We have statutory obligations to make sure that there is oversight um, of the administration of this council and holding the Lord Mayor to account. And under decisions like this, we're seeing, we're seeing 420 delegations this year being sought to be made. Um, and so just like the 2022-23 council budget that we have just debated over the last few days, we're seeing less and less transparency from this LNP administration in all aspects of council now. Uh, it's no wonder that Brisbane residents feel that they're not getting value for money for their rates. Uh, they are paying more and more and getting less and less, and they're finding out less and less about it under this LNP administration. Further debate? Councillor Johnston. Yes, thank you. I rise to uh, speak on these four items. Um, and I'll start with the uh, establishment and coordination. Well, I might come back to that one. Um, I'm going to start with the significant contracting plan for the cycle park at Murray. This is a fascinating exercise in uh, a new way of governance for the city. This this item ha actually hasn't even been through ENC, um, so it was actually signed off uh, by the senior council officers over two weeks ago before the last council meeting but it wasn't taken through ENC, and now it's been whacked onto the back of the budget agenda, so there's no scrutiny of the decision-making. Now, you know, I don't know that there's any big issue with ENC not rubber-stamping it, because clearly they pay no attention uh, other than to, uh, to tick off on things, you know, boom, approved, and then it comes through to council. 
Um, but the really fascinating part of what's going on with this project is that they have bypassed the normal process altogether. And you would think with a signature piece of infrastructure like this, that they would want to do it in a very open and transparent way, but they're not. They've tacked it onto the back end of the special meeting at 7.30 on a Thursday night, uh, and they don't want any scrutiny of it. And I, I, I can see why. I can see why. So what I read uh, with respect to this matter is there have been a range of this. Uh, there's some restrictions on what I can say because of commercial inconfidence. But the different figures that have been mentioned about how much this is going to cost and what it's going to do and all those things over the last few days have been quite interesting. The public figures do not, do not in any way match up with the figures that are in this document before us today. Yeah, well, I think it's, I, I look, there's, there's a whole range of issues, there's a whole range of issues here. Um, a, as the report itself uh, outlines today, the financial situation and the construction market has deteriorated, so it's costing more. So council's on the hook now for more uh, than what it thought it was <coughs> gonna have to pay for this. Uh, and you know how they're paying for it? Well, it's on the bank card. I mean, the Lord Mayor's not here, um, but they've just borrowed $326 million so they can afford uh, to borrow to pay for this cycling track, and that's what they're doing. Uh, and, and the Lord Mayor will say, well, all this is infrastructure, uh, but cycling is a pretty core responsibility of this council. Um, but then we look at what's been publicly promised that's not actually what's being built under the significant contracting plan. So I know there have been other projects where the Lord Mayor stands up and promises we're going to do A, B, C, D, E and F, but he only then ever does A. And where's some other good examples of that? Well, green bridges. Uh, there's a great example of it. I'm going to do five green bridges and I'm going to go it alone and I'm going to pay for them. <coughs> Meanwhile, there's now two and there won't be any more. Well, that's pretty much what this is starting to look like as well, because publicly, um, the community's been told there's BMX tracks and there's this and there's that, but not in this contracting plan that's before us today. So this administration is again over-promising and under-delivering, and I do not support this item and I won't be voting for it. Um, it is not acceptable that this Lord Mayor feels that there is this level of borrowing that can go on um, to pay for something that is not needed this year this is a, not a critical project, but he will not support residents who are flooded. He will not fund footpaths. He refuses to fund uh, the upgrade for drainage in my ward. He refuses to fund a green walk signal at Fairfield. Well, I refuse to agree to fund a cycling track at Murray. If this Lord Mayor can't invest in the residents of Brisbane, uh, for a few hundred thousand dollars in Tennyson Ward, then there's no way I'm supporting um, a bit of pork barrelling in uh, the LNP eastern suburbs. There's just no chance, particularly when the finances are so tricky and the big difference between what's been publicly said and now what is being brought through in the dead of night uh, on the credit card is so very different. So I will not be supporting it. Uh, the um, just briefly on the uninhabitable rates uh, char oh, sorry, yes, the policy. Look, I I'm sorry that wasn't taken up. Um, changing the policy now, I did think about doing another amendment, but we really needed the financial amendment, which can only be done through the budget. Um, so I'm very disappointed that this administration has failed to support what was a very sensible uh, change that would really help people in need. But it's OK, because while Rome's burning, uh, they're going to build you a cycling track at Murray. I'm sure all the residents in my area who've got nowhere to live and are paying bills uh, that they can barely afford to pay are quite happy to know that there are uh, millions and millions of dollars that councils borrowed to pay for a cycling track. Um, the other really cracking little, um, there's two other items and I'll speak on them briefly, but uh, one of them that's really interesting is the org chart changes. 
Um, and just briefly on this, um, when you do a bit of a comparison about uh, what's happening, um, I mean, it, 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 number one clearly shows how redundant Councillor Krista Adams is in this whole structure, um, uh, because uh, it's not like this is going into a portfolio that she might actually have some say in. It's actually going into Councillor Adam Allen's portfolio, uh, as it's going into city planning, uh, and. Uh, interestingly enough, I mean, earlier today, Councillor Adams said that, you know, it was, was critical that she was doing the Olympic stuff and, and, you know, she had important Olympics duties. Well, uh, apparently she doesn't. Um, Councillor Allen does. Uh, and, uh, of course, joining an association of past cities that have uh, participated in Olympics is not actually uh, contributing to the running of the Olympics. That's actually done by BOCOG. And Councillor Adams is not on BOCOG. We know that the Lord Mayor tried, um, but he had to get his other LNP mate nominated to go on to BOCOG. Uh, the Redlands Mayor failed uh, candidate for the Liberal Party. Uh, so, you know, it, it's fascinating. But the other really interesting thing about um, this org chart before us today is currently um, the standing committees of council uh, are up sort of just diagrammatically next to council. So they're associated with council, which makes sense, of course, because the council committees uh, make decisions and then they come through here to council for endorsement um, and adoption. Well, according to this, not anymore. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on here, uh, but now the council and standing commitments report to the Lord Mayor. They don't actually report to the council. And I thought that was quite an interesting little change uh, as to what's going on here. So this org chart, I think, uh, has a few problems with it. Uh, and certainly I think that there needs to be some explanation about uh, why the council standing committees um, that report to council are now in the new organisational structure reporting to the Lord Mayor because I'm not aware that the City of Brisbane Act or the regulations have actually changed uh, and uh, that suddenly the Lord Mayor is now responsible for approving uh, the outcome of committee decisions. But according to this, he is. So I don't know if anything else has changed. There's no writing to reflect this. Um, I don't know if it's just some eager beaver up there in the CEO's office uh, who's decided the Lord Mayor gets to be in charge of everything, uh, but uh, I don't think that's quite good enough, and that's clearly a pretty fundamental mistake um, that senior council officers don't know um, where the council committees report. They report here to full council, not directly to the Lord Mayor. Finally, on uh, the delegations, I absolutely do not support this item. Um, I, I have since I've become an independent, it's one of the best things uh, that I've been able to talk about, is the way in which that this uh, LMP administration has uh, eroded democracy and basically uh, put unelected council officers in charge of decision making in this city. Um, it is wrong. And we heard uh, Councillor Cunningham, who gets paid extra to make decisions stand up today and say she doesn't think that she should be accountable for making sure that the finances of this city are actually accounted for. She doesn't think she should have to uh, tick off on changes to budget items. Uh, she doesn't think that uh, how the uh, financial accountability of this council is, is being delivered is something that she's responsible for. And she's the finance chairperson. Uh, so I do not support the changes to the delegations uh, before us today. Like Councillor Cassidy, I noted that there's been a pretty big increase Councillor in the Johnston. number of delegations. Um, oh. oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Johnston, you can continue. I, I just thought there was an error. Was yes. Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, seven minutes, 28. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I was on a roll. Thanks for that. Um, I am nearly finished, though. I, I, I won't keep going. But like uh, Councillor uh, Cassidy, I did notice um, that there is a very big problem with the uh, level of delegations, the number of delegations. Um, it, it's pretty clear that this LNP administration is very tired. They're very out of touch. Um, they just want to put things on the credit card. 
Uh, they don't want to be accountable for the financial expenditure. Uh, they don't want to be accountable back to this council, um, which is the elected uh, body that makes decisions. Um, they have run out of ideas, they've run out of steam, uh, and it is... <laughs> well, Councillor Johnston. Murphy, I welcome your Cou contribution. Councillor Johnston, um, yeah. I have to tell you, your time has expired. Your timer is frozen at 7.28, but the time is now ended. Further debate, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr Chair, and I rise to uh, speak on these items, in particular item 21, but I will just say it's so ironic that the person who we've heard most from today stands here and says she won't be lectured from Councillor Owen, and we've had nothing but lectures for the last two hours. Um, lectures that make absolutely no sense, um, particularly being lectured on the budget, the rates and the resolutions from a councillor who voted directly against economic development in this place by voting against Program 7, the program that supports local businesses, that supports the mums and dads businesses. She has so much hatred for the fact that I'm representing the city for uh, the Olympics Point in 2032 order. that she can't get... Uh, Deputy Mayor, just for a moment. Councillor uh, Johnston, to be claim to be misrepresented. Deputy Mayor. Uh, the division will show she voted against Program 7. Uh, she did not support Program 7. Let's go that way. She did not support Program 7. She didn't support the work we do for the mums and dad businesses who probably have also been flood affected as well. But that doesn't matter because she can't get past the hatred of the Brisbane City host uh, of operations order. and activities that we have now point of as an Olympic city. Councillor Claim Johnston, to be point misrepresented. Of Claim to be misrepresented. Deputy Mayor. Maybe there's other reasons why she'd not support the economic development. Uh, however, I did need to make sure it went into the record that not everything that comes out of the Council of Attendance's mouth is actually the full truth, because there was some commentary there about the significant contracting plan not doing what we've been talking about. And I just wanted to put into the record that it's very clear in paragraph 2.0 in the significant contracting plan. Uh, that as the announcement, there will be a destination Premier Wheeled International Precinct, which will include a criterium track upgrade, an inline skating track, new clubhouse, new car park, new learn to ride track, new pump BMX track, new lighting services. Uh, it'll be in a stage manage, managed with a international level criterium, then the car park with future recreational activities, then the clubhouse, cafe, community space, retail, and being done in partnership with the Queensland Government under the Community Stimulus Program and the Australian Government under the LRCI Program. Now, we heard from Councillor Johnson that none of that was in the contracting plan. It's actually on the very first page. Very first page. It is a spectacular program, kind of like the spectacular $12 million park that was over in the Tennyson Ward after the last floods when we went and got the money paid back and got the, uh, the Ken Fletcher Park made in Tennyson. Did any of us jump up and down about the outrage of the money spent in the Tennyson Ward after 2012 and that fantastic park? Oh, actually, maybe one person did. That's right. Uh, that's right. Didn't want it in her ward either. But this... Councillor Johnston, Councillor Johnston, please. Councillor Johnston. Deputy Mayor, please continue. Councillor Johnston got a $12 million park and still whinges. I rest my case. I rest my case. It will never, ever, ever be enough. As I said earlier... <laughs> I'm just going to let it go through to the keeper, Mr Chair. Um, as I said earlier today, not only is this a fantastic outcome for the residents of Brisbane, with a fantastic premier cycling club at Balmoral Cycling there, with the work of men like Jim Cockrell and many others that have started this so many, many years ago, but for us, Going forward to 2032 and beyond, this is the type of level of delivery of precincts we are going to see through the Brisbane City Host Office in our planning in line with OCOG and through the urban renewal. And for the administrative changes, I welcome uh, Ms Andronicus and the Irma team into uh, my program that I have oversight of. The work that they do is absolutely outstanding. The work that they do 
is absolutely outstanding with Beda and the ED team and now Irma all in there under making sure that the economic benefits of the opportunity we have in 2032 are absolutely beyond anything this city has ever seen before. Further speakers? Oh, um, sorry, Councillor Johnston, you had two claims yes, of misrepresentation. Yes, they're both the same. Um, Councillor Adams repeatedly said that I had hatred for her in representing the city uh, uh, on the Olympics. In fact, in my uh, speech today, uh, I said that her involvement in uh, travel and in the Olympics was unnecessary and a waste of ratepayers' funds. Um, the word hatred was never used and never implied. Further speakers. Councillor Shree. Chair, I think some of us are perhaps a little overtired and um, maybe need to chill a little bit. Uh, I won't name names. Um, just wanted to really briefly speak on the Murray cycling track. Um, I think reasonable people can disagree about spending priorities across the um, city. I certainly have my views about where the money is most urgently needed. I, and I'm obviously also very critical of the Olympics, and maybe that factors into this a little bit. But I did just want to particularly point out, and I hope the mayor is listening to this one. Um, no, I wouldn't count on it either. I don't think he is listening. Um, maybe Councillor Murphy will listen and pass it on to him. I don't know. Uh, look, the council's about to spend. Am I allowed to say the figure? I'm not allowed to say the figure of how much. No. No, it's commercial. Right. Council's about to spend a lot of money on this facility. And okay, okay. Um, and I, I see in the in the scope of the project, there's also you know new car parking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I, I think it's probably fair to say that quite a bit of money will be spent on that new car park. And I just wanted to remark upon and highlight the paradox that right now it's very hard to safely cycle to this precinct. Um, and Lord Mayor, I would ask you to reflect on the fact that, um, I, I don't know, has, has anyone else ridden along Wynnum Road? Am I the only one? Have you maybe a few times? That stretch right, it's got a very narrow painted bike lane. Um, but it's pretty hairy when you're riding on the road and the footpath's not really r wide enough for people to r ride safely at, at a decent clip. Um, so you're gonna have this world-class cycling facility, really high quality infrastructure. That's great, love it, good, good stuff. Um, but you won't actually be able to ride there safely. So maybe Councillor Murphy, Lord Mayor, Councillor Davies, maybe you should have a look at whether as part of this project you can upgrade the bike lanes that actually lead to the Murray Recreation Reserve. Um, I would suggest that there's, um, there's already a bit of space there. There's, um, yeah, it does actually, I think. Is that what you said? Anyway, um, Wynnum Road's already got the bike lanes. It's already got the painted lanes there. Um, what it needs is some barrier separation. Similar treatment to what you used in the city. Doesn't cost a, cost a lot couple of thousand dollars, whack in some extra barriers along Wynnum Road so that as part of this project, if you're going to deliver this world-class cycling facility, um, people will actually be able to ride to it. Um, I, I don't care much for the kind of cyclists who just drive to the destination and then take their, car, their, their bike off the back of the car and, um, and ride around the track and then and drive home again. But I, I know that is a demographic that we have to cater for. Um, but I, I think... It, I accept that, I'm, I, I, and I'm not knocking them, but I, I guess I would just say it would be nice to have a cycling facility that people can safely ride to. And Lord Mayor, I hope you would agree with that. It's a simple premise. Just chuck a couple thousand bucks towards some separators so that you can make those existing bike lanes that are already there on the road so that you can make them safe. I think that should happen as part of this project. You're already um, spending part of the budget on transport infrastructure in the form of car parking. So if, as part of this project, you can build more car parking to carry more cars to this precinct, you should be able to improve the bike, bike lanes and put in some safe separated cycling facilities so that people can ride to this project. And while you're at it, maybe drop the speed limit because that stretch of Wynnum Road is still 70 kilometres now, which is dangerously fast. Um, that, that, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see how this project evolves. I think there's a good opportunity there. but. My usual criticisms of um, large centrally managed projects stand, and I think there'll be a lot of a lot of waste and a lot of fat um, in in terms of how this is actually rolled out. And you'll probably find that what actually gets delivered on the ground could have been delivered a lot cheaper if we'd done it um, a bit more sensibly, particularly when we know that these private contractors are going to add in quite significant profit margins of their own. But anyway. Um,
I, th I think probably people know where my broader thoughts on some of the other items that we're discussing here today. So I won't take up too much more of the chamber's time. Uh, thanks. Further debate, Councillor Atwood. Thank you, Deputy Chair. Um, I too rise to speak about item 19, approval for the significant contracting plan for the Brisbane International Cycling Plan. I just also wanted to quickly mention um, in Councillor Shree's speech about bikeways, we just invested four and a half million dollars to do a new bikeway to help better connect it up to the suburbs around it. So, no, it's a like a, a bikeway bikeway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fully separated, so it's a great addition. Um, but when our Lord Mayor became the Lord Mayor in March 2019, he shared a vision for his city. For Council to deliver a premier wheeled international criterium track and facilities for future recreational activities. To establish the reserve as a destination premier wheeled international precinct in the future. But Chair, it's not too often that we're given the opportunity as Lord Mayors or Councillors to deliver an iconic project for our community that will leave a transformative legacy for South East Queensland. And I firmly believe that the proposed upgrade to the Murray Recreation Reserve, or MUS as locals call it, will do just that. Over the past two years, we've um, consulted Oz Cycling, Speed Zone, Balmoral Cycling Club, Queensland Cycling, just to name a few. And there is nothing else like this in Australia. We've engaged with the industry's best to deliver the best, including Bly Tanner, COS Architects, um, who was involved in the Anna Mears Velodrome. Um, oh, yes, fantastic. Um, and Brisbane City Council's own landscape design team, who have ensured that the draft concept plan is validated and all of the proposed delivery element op um, optimises the site's full potential for many, many years to come. The committed funds will deliver an international level of embellishments, which will attract Australian and international cycling events. According to Ausroads, around 3.4 million Australians ride a bike for transport or recreation every week, and cycling was one of the most common forms of exercise. Comparing these statistics to other popular sports such as AFL or football in 2019, AFL had 1.6 million participants, and football had 1.8 million. Now, I just want you to think about your own communities and how many football clubs, how many soccer clubs we have, and I support them, they are fantastic, but how many cycling facilities do we have in Brisbane? <laughs> well, it's very different, Councillor. We're talking about the Olympics here in training, so it's very different. Cycling enjoys a widespread appeal from Australians of all ages and backgrounds. Despite its popularity, cyclists and enthusiasts are often provided poor or no facilities to ride on and have no alternative but to share the road in many cases with cars or trucks. With Council's help, the Balmoral Cycling Club can continue to foster their junior and senior cycling programs and keep delivering some of Australia's finest riders like Henry Sweeney, oh, sorry, Harry Sweeney, James um, Moriarty and Blake Quick, who all spent a lot of time at the MUS growing and developing their skills. These new opportunities will help foster our next generation of cyclists and prepare them for the 2032 Olympics in Brisbane. I would encourage every councillor to support this terrific upgrade for Brisbane and I warmly welcome you to visit it once it's opened. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. Is there any further debate? No further debate? I will now put the motion on items 19 and 22. All those in favour say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. No. The ayes have it. Division. Division. The division has been called by Councillor Cassidy and Councillor Johnston. Councillors, ayes to my right, noes to my left. Please ring the bells. Oh. Uh, councillors, we have some uh, technical errors in regards to timing and the bells. We will need to manually ring the bell. Do we have a bell?
Orderly, uh, please lock the bars. And clerks, please read the results. Mr Chair, the ayes have it. The voting being 16 in favour and six against. The motion is carried. We will now move to the motion on item 20. All those in favour say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. We will now move to the motion on item 21. All those in favour say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. No. The ayes have it. Division. Seconded. Division called by the Deputy Mayor and Councillor Hutton. Councillors, eyes to my right, nose to my left. Please ring the bells. Orderly, uh, please lock the bars. The clerks, please read the results. Mr Chair, the ayes have it. The voting being 21 in favour and two abstentions. The motion is carried. Uh, councillors, can I just make a note in conclusion that uh, Councillor McLaughlin, despite his illness, has persevered in watching <laughs> the chamber for two days, so I want to give him a shout out. <laughs> uh, and councillors and Lord Mayor, as that concludes the business of the special meeting, I declare the meeting closed. Yeah.